Hello, in this video I will show you an extremely easy way to blend together images of the night sky taken with a star tracker like for instance this Skywatcher Star Adventurer that I have right here. We're going to be working with a sky exposure looking like this and a ground shot that looks like this. And I am going to show you how to combine these two images together in order to come up with a final image looking like this, which is nice and sharp across the entire frame. And it might sound difficult or overwhelming at first, but believe me, by the end of this video you will be surprised that you didn't think of this technique yourself because it is so easy. All right, let's get started. Alright, so before we begin, let me just quickly remind you why would you even want to blend together two images of the night sky in the first place. Because if you are taking photos using an astro tracker and you want to take photos with an astro tracker because you can get much higher quality, and that is because you can keep the shutter speed longer, you can keep the shutter open for longer periods of time without the stars in your image starting to trail because of the Earth's rotational movement. The tracker, when it's set up properly, it rotates, it rotates the base of the camera in a way exactly to compensate for the Earth's rotational movement so that the sky is stationary with regards to your camera. But of course, if you are tracking the movement of the sky, that means that the ground is stationary with regards to our camera so that the ground is blurry on an image like this. And in order to compensate for that, again, we need to take a separate photo with the tracker that is turned off Pretty much the same framing, tracker turned off, then we are taking another photo with the same camera settings and on that second photo the sky is blurry because again of the earth's notational movement but the ground is stationary and tack sharp. So we end up with two images and we need to combine them together. We need to take the sharp sky from the first image and we need to take the sharp ground from the second image and merge it together, blend it together in a way that is seamless, that you don't see any edge when the transition between the two photos occur. And the technique to do that that I'm about to show you just a second it's super easy it's it's so easy that even basic photoshop knowledge is definitely enough to pull it off you don't need any additional skills inside photoshop you don't need any additional plugins but there's one very important prerequisite in order to be able to use this method i will get back to that condition later on as we progress with the video but right now let's go into photoshop and let me show you how it can be done Okay, so we begin the process actually in Lightroom. So right here, as you can see, we have two exposures. The first exposure is the exposure for the sky. As you can see, the ground is blurry because of the, again, rotational movement of the earth. And the second exposure is when the ground is stationary, the ground is tech sharp, but the sky is blurry. You can see the star trace of the stars because of the movement of the earth. So we need to combine those two images together. And the important part in Lightroom is that the both images are developed using the same exact settings. Typically, it's best to use the same camera settings as well. As you can see, I have a 24 millimeters f2.8 lens. I am shooting at four minutes of shutter speed, f3.5 and ISO 400 for both of these images. And what you want to do, you want to use the same exact develop settings. So, you know, exposure, contrast, typically don't go at this point to texture, clarity, dehaze or anything like this. Maybe remove the chromatic aberrations and vignetting right here, as you can see, and then sync it together with the second exposure. So at this point, we're going to open Photoshop with those two images in the same document as layers. So select both, command click, select the other, right click, edit in, open as layers in Photoshop. And now we are in Photoshop. As you can see on the top here, I have the sky exposure and on the bottom, I have the ground exposure. And actually I want to change it in place because I want to have the ground on the top. I'm also going to rename it so I know that it's, it's the ground. And this one is the sky like this. And what you want to do now is you want to drop down the opacity of the ground to around 50%. So you can see how the sky exposure would blend through if we mask out our ground here at the line of the horizon. And as you can see, you can toggle it also. As you can see, the exposure of the sky, the ground part, the blurry part of the ground of the sky exposure kind of bleeds through here around this tree. So we need to fix this. And the way to fix this is just to enlarge the portion of the sky. And the easy way to fix this is just enlarge our layer of the sky. So we're going to lock this one because this one is on the top. Click on the padlock here and then select the sky, hit command T, which opens the transform. And then, as you can see, make sure that this link is clicked because this ensures that we are maintaining the aspect ratio and just enlarge it a little bit. Anyway, as you can see, this is the blurry part of the ground here in the sky exposure that you need to move away. So something like this should be enough. Click here to apply. And right now I can unlock this. I can go back with opacity to 100%. 
and if I toggle it on and off you can see that we are pretty good if we mask it out right here on the edge we will be looking at only the sky and no part of the ground from this exposure would be bleeding through to our final photo so right now to create our mask we are just going to take the lasso tool the regular lasso tool nothing fancy not a quick select not an object tool nothing like this just the regular lasso tool this one we take the lasso and we're going to draw a mask around the ground it can be very rough it doesn't have to be precise at all and what you want to do is you want to also include a little bit of the sky above our actual horizon line and why is that i'm going to show you later on so we're going to draw like this I'm just drawing with my touchpad on my MacBook actually. So something like this, again, very rough, not precise at all. Something like this up here and then down, left and let go. And as you can see, I have a rough selection, a very rough selection on the ground. So how possibly can I work with that? Well, we are just going to apply it as a mask. Why not? So let's click on the ground exposure and let's click on this little icon right here, which creates the mask from the selection. And as you can see, it doesn't look good at all. And I agree, it doesn't look good at all. There is this horrible line and we can exactly see when one part of our image stops and the other one begins. But the secret to make it work seamless is to actually feather out our mask. So double click on the mask, make sure that the mask is selected, open the properties window. And right here you have the feather slider. And all you have to do is just feather it out a bunch, let go and bam, look at that. It already looks beautiful. And what, didn't I tell you? How easy was that? And like I mentioned before, in order to use that technique, you need one condition to be met with your images. And that is that the horizon line is pretty bright right above the horizon. And this is actually very common because even if you have a good vantage point like this place where I was photographing the night sky, it's like Bortle 4 class sky. So it's pretty dark in itself. But I'm also very high in altitude. I was on this hilltop and I was overlooking some mountains in the distance and there was some small towns, some roads, something like this, which was emanating the light and that way the horizon was pretty bright in itself and also the atmosphere glows in itself there is this phenomenon called the air glow the atmospheric glow so the horizon line is pretty much always going to be a lot brighter than the sky that is above you and you can use that bright part of the horizon that bright part of the sky right above the horizon to your advantage in order to hide this transition line because if it's bright enough it's going to overpower the stars that would be in this place and that way if you make this transition you don't see any stars in this transition place but it is expected because it is brighter than the stars itself because the horizon is bright and if you blend it together this transition line if it's properly feathered out like I have just shown you it will hide the transition perfectly and actually there is one place in this image with a little bit of imperfection and we can fix that very easily so let me show you that as well okay so if we zoom in here on the right part of the image you can see that we see a little bit of the sky from our ground shot you can see those little star trays here and this is the part of the sky from our ground shot which had the stars blurry and we can fix that in a very easy way so what you want to do is you want to create a group from this layer right here you can click on this button to create a group make sure that the ground layer is inside the group and also move the mask to the group so just click here drag and drag it to the group name like this and then when you're clicked in here make sure to add a new layer you can click on this button just new blank layer and make sure that this layer is inside this group which has this mask and on top of the group and right now we need to disable our mask for a second so click on the shift key on your keyboard and holding the shift key click on the mask to disable it and also toggle off the sky exposure for a second and what you want to do is make sure that the blank layer is selected Go over to the healing brush tool, so just here and a healing brush, make it a little bit bigger and then just stamp somewhere here, remove this, stamp somewhere here, remove this, somewhere here, remove this line, somewhere here, remove this line. And that's a very easy way to remove those star trays right on this edge where they might show up through our mask. And right now, if I toggle it on and off, you can see the difference. It looks pretty good. We can enable the sky exposure again, we can enable the mask again, and it pretty much looks flawless. As you can see, there is no part of the sky for our ground shot right here because I removed those trails and the image looks 
pretty much perfect so what do you think about the final result i think the result looks incredible and how easy was that i was just literally hand drawing a very rough mask with a lasso tool then applying some feathering and then i was cleaning up a little bit of an edge in some places where it needed to be with a healing brush like i have just shown you this is super easy and like I said, it doesn't work in every single scenario, but I think it's worth a shot because like I said, it's super easy. And if it doesn't work, then you can definitely try to employ some more advanced techniques and I will get back to that in just a second. But right now, I just wanted to ask you to like this video. If you liked it, hopefully it would really help me out. So just hit that like button and also comment down below if you have any questions. I pretty much answer every single comment and I get on YouTube. And also if any part of the video is confusing to you, if you need anything clarified, definitely hit me up in the comments don't hesitate and also consider subscribing to this channel because i upload pretty much new videos every single week i have a lot of astrophotography related content on my channel already so you can browse through my channel and you will probably find some interesting stuff in there and right now if you want to learn how to use more advanced techniques like luminosity masking in order to mask out perfectly the horizon line in more complicated scenarios then you can click on the video right here and if you want to watch a full vlog about how i captured the image that i I have just shown you in Photoshop, definitely check out my vlog right here when I show you everything I do in the field. So until next time, have a nice day and clear skies. Bye bye.